It's another Power98.3FM.com exclusive. We're here with 50. I'm live. We're in Phoenix. And 50's about to hit the stage. You need no introduction, so I'm going to get right into it. On your site today, this is 50.com. Nicki Minaj versus Lil' Kim. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that from 50's perspective? Well, I mean, I, I think there's other things that's irritating Kim outside of the Nicki Minaj just... Having momentum with new artists, it doesn't offend artists to establish themselves long before that, but it's, it's obviously that there was some, uh, she was inspired by some of Kim's. Right. But that's not bad. Yeah, no, that's not, I, don't I mean, think who hasn't been inspired by, by somebody someone, else? You know, and it's not a whole lot of female artists that you can make reference to. Mm-hmm. So you'll see those little influences even stronger mm-hmm. in her character. And I think she's hot. I think she's got a good little been going right now as far as Nicki Minaj is concerned. Mm-hmm. But I think it's probably a little more irritating to see Puffy mm-hmm. stand Oh yeah, that's right. Minaj. Yeah, that's right. You know, and to say, for him to say that uh, Ross reminds him of Biggie. Mm-hmm. You know, because that's desperation on his part. Yeah. Because his music sucks, right? <laughs> that's what I was going to ask you. I was like, that's hello, good morning, dirty money, that whole thing. Like, uh, it's, just, it's bad. So we got to kind of stay as close as he can to something else to have some momentum for it to be all right. Mm-hmm. So he's trying to turn it into a, his old crew. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's not comparable. I, it's not. It's not it the really same is. thing, but you know. But that, the younger generation probably don't know any better. You know what I mean? So to them, it's new to them. And they, the other artists kind of have a specific, they, they got cool in their own little pockets. Mm-hmm. So like, he making himself cool with the people that they actually that like them. Mm-hmm. You know? And it beats blank, you know, from a business perspective, it's probably one of the coolest moves he made that isn't really cool for hip-hop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool for hip-hop, detox, everybody asks you, what do you know about that since you're cool with Dre? What I want to know about, like 10 minutes ago, they said Recovery League, Eminem. What's, what's that, what's, what are we looking forward to on that well, album? I have, I have no idea. You I, haven't I'm heard it? As anxious to hear it as everybody else, because... Relapse, when he did Relapse, he did Relapse too. Uh-huh. You know, the same by time frame. And then I had recorded for the Relapse too. So we made music that we planned to put out. And then afterwards, I, I don't think he liked the response right. to it. So it made him just reassess what, what he wanted to do with the next album. And he scrapped it, Relapse too. And then he went to recovery. So we'll see what happens. Now you kind of on your own recovery after those crazy pictures came out that you dropped mad weight. And you said liquid diet, nine weeks, you said? Yeah, it was, it was pretty tough. You know, I, I was focused because I had committed to the actual project. Mm-hmm. And um, it's, it's a really relevant project from my perspective. Like, I believe one out of eight million people in the world actually die of some sort of cancer. Mm-hmm. And the character that I'm playing actually passes away. A friend of mine, a close friend growing up, he passed away from cancer. So. That's why I committed to that actual idea. Mm-hmm. And the movie's called Things Fall Apart. And I'm hoping, that, I mean, considering how close you are to the role and you have personal experience, you went through all that to drop the weight, that your acting is way better than common and just right. Because that shit was <laughs> borderline hurtful. Yeah, you, you thought so? <laughs> yeah, and you look real skinny too. I thought it was pretty good though. You know, I'm a, no. I'm a fan of. And I love common, but that was Yeah, and I like, I like the, uh, I like the love and basketball. Mm-hmm. With, uh, it's not like yeah, oh yeah, that was good. You know, that was good. And to me, that was like a modern version of it with, with more. Like it had the NBA in it and really cool cameos from other professional athletes. Yeah, well, who was in there? Uh, what's your name? Dwight with the big shoulders. Dwight Howard. Dwight, Dwight Howard. Howard. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm always like the dude with the big arms. <laughs> <laughs> Superman. <laughs> yeah, well, you were doing that fast and you and you were doing the liquid. You just missed chewing. I did it fast for 10 days, I was done. Like after like the third week, I kind of hit a wall, I was, it was crazy, I felt like I just wanted to eat mm-hmm. everything that was around, and then I uh, started reading from uh, other talented actors that have been in positions where they made the physical transformation, mm-hmm. I would start reading the interviews, mm-hmm. you know, just to see what they were saying, like, they was experienced, like, I'm like, they really just doing this shit, like, this yeah. is crazy, like, it was so hard that... I, I was reading what uh, De Niro was saying when he did Raging Bull, and then uh-huh. Tom Hanks during Philadelphia, and Christian Bale during The Machinist. And it kind of inspired me to, to actually stay focused on the project. See, that's like some real deep stuff. 
you know, when I was doing my fast, I did a 10 day cleanse. It was no, no food, just liquid, mm -hmm. same thing. And I, Rev Run was in the studio and he was like, well, I did it for 40 days, so you're gonna be all right. And I was like, oh, okay, okay, I'll hang in there. And I do this thing called food porn. Uh -huh. And any artist that come in, I just be like, just tell me what you ate today. And tell it to me real slow. So I and I, yeah, and I felt like, I felt like, yeah, okay. And Lady Gaga, I was like, what do you, she was like, fluffy eggs. I was like, real fluffy? Like, what kind of cheese did you have? And she was just explaining it to me. It became up this whole food porn bit, like, just to get through, like, being hungry every day. Even my partner, he was still eating. And that's hard, too, right? With people around you eating and stuff. Yeah, and no, I was just like, let me smell it. It felt like you, I was eating it. Could you imagine being stuck on a tour bus with me? Oh, and all those food dudes. everywhere. There's food there. You still just, just go upstairs and close the door. But yeah, in the UK, you got like the tour buses with two levels. So I just cook when it close the door. Damn. You haven't you haven't toured here in the U.S. in three years. Why is that? Well, because I, I've been focusing on strengthening my international presence. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the music, it's, it's a to me, it's a bigger significance for them to embrace you worldwide than it is for you to just stay local here. Because a guy that has a song that plays on the radio would be considered hot for the moment. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's you know, just like and it's just it's... one, and then you may never see him again, but he's hot at that moment. You know what I'm saying? And internationally, you have to have your portfolio of hit records over a time period mm -hmm. will command them actually calling paying the money to bring you out. You know, they gotta call you for one song. Right. Um, Cause you're in Phoenix, I gotta ask you, I don't know if you follow the news much, but I gotta ask you about SB 1070. Do you have a stance on that whole situation with everybody or for boycotting Arizona and doing shows here and stuff like that because of the bill? Well, you know, I, I don't, I'm not boycotting anyone. <laughs> you know, like, I, a lot of people, I, I guess, I don't know, really, like that, I don't know what my, Position on that is, but I know I perform wherever people want to be entertained by my material. Mm -hmm. And I travel, I've been pretty much hey, I'm in Baku, I'm next to Afghanistan. Oh, wow. On the UK tour, so I don't, I don't really have an area where, where I'll go and where I won't go. It's just scheduling and timing. And I'd like to say I've been everywhere, period. Uh -huh. At the end of me actually traveling and performing. All right, for the ladies, is 50 single? Yes. <laughs> and I, I wanted to ask you, Don't get it. <laughs> uh, if who, out of these three ladies, who's most likely to be the next baby mama if you had to choose? Lady Gaga, Minaj, or Miley Cyrus? Wow. <laughs> That's a tough one. That's a tough one, man. <laughs> I think you got me this time. Just say lady. I take uh, my Cyrus. I'll just wait. Oh. <laughs> wait Give me some time until she's old enough. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll be patient. <laughs> All right, it's Lady Law, <laughs> 50, Phoenix. I appreciate you taking the time out. Uh, Power98.3FM.com exclusive.